Don't forget to leave a bowl of milk out for the cat she. This is a belief in the Scottish Highlands and Ireland and basically the Celtic lands that this fairy cat was active on Samhain night, Iha Sauna. And this cat could be appeased if you leave a bowl of milk outside. But if you don't, then you're not going to have a bountiful crop for the following year and you're going to suffer. Basically, the cat's going to eat your soul. Distinctive because of it, it's a black cat with a white marking on its chest. So beware of cats looking like this on Halloween. Then maybe where the belief that a cat has nine lives comes from, because one of the legends about the cat she is that a witch could transform into this cat eight times, but on the ninth time, she would be stuck as the cat forever. So don't let that happen to you. Be sure you only transform into a cat eight times, okay, witches? Just looking out. <laughs> Now we can get back to your regularly scheduled program about the mother fairy flowers. Thank you for watching. Hello and welcome to the Heathen Coalition. My name is Dawn and if you're new here, I talk about folklore, all sorts of occult and mystical references, random wisdom. Fairyology is the study of fairies and today we're going to be delving into some lesser known folk names regarding the wee folk or the fairy folk as the Irish typically refer to them. In Gaelic though they are called the she. We see this term in banshee. I'm going to be talking about references to the fairies in the garden. These flowers have nicknames referring to the fae. So without further ado, I'm going to jump right in and read you these folk names. The Time Daughter was known as Fairy's Hair, and you can see why, because it's very tangly and viney, and it has the effect of hair swaying in the wind on a windy day. It is a parasitic plant that latches on to thyme. Thyme is a sacred plant to the Greeks especially, and it comes from the Greek for a sacrificial burnt offering. I presume it would be what they would use to smudge with if they would name it after a holy smoke. A fairy's horse is the ragwort. Due to the folk belief that this is one of the flowers that the fairies would ride around on, creating mischief. The orange hawkweed is the fairy's paintbrush. A fairy's table can refer to either the common mushroom or the European marsh pennywort. And the marsh pennywort does kind of look like cute little fairy tables, but it also resembles money. Because this plant resembles tiny coins, it took on the folk names of the lucky plant, the money plant, and pennywort. So if you're trying to attract money, fairy tables or the marsh pennywort might be the plant for you. The foxglove was known as the fairy's petticoat. And interestingly, foxglove was originally called folksglove as a reference to the fairies being the wee folk. Folksgloves were also called fairy bells. Bugbane is a fairy's candle. I always find it fascinating when I look up one of these plants and I kind of can tell right away why it has the folk name that it does. For example, fairy grass or quaking grass is also known as maiden's hair grass. And you can see why this would be called maiden's hair or lady's hair because it resembles the long braids that maidens traditionally kept their hair in. And the folks glove is mentioned again as the fairy's cap. The fruit of the dwarf mallow is fairy cheese because the seed pods resemble a miniature wheel of cheese with wedge-shaped sections. And anyone familiar with Celtic lore probably has heard of fairy rings, mushroom circles, they're a gateway, especially on Beltana or May's Eve. You do not want to step in a mushroom ring. Certain times of the year, the gateway is more prone to suck you in. There might also be a fairy green, which is a circle in the grass that does not have mushrooms. A fairy ring spot is caused by Heterosporium echinulatum. A fairy ring mushroom is any mushroom causing fairy rings, especially the white spored agaric Merasmius oreids. Interestingly though, I've never heard of a fairy ring also referencing juniper. The fairy creeper is climbing fumitory. And the fairy water lily is the floating heart. The blood cup mushroom is called a fairy's bath. A fairy cup could refer to multiple things, 
such as the prime rose, the blood cup, or the mitterwort. There's an annual Californian herb, Clarkia Brewery, that is known as Fairy Fans. The foxglove is fairy's finger. The fairy club refers to any club fungus. A fairy lily is the Adamasco lily, or the rain lily. Fairy money is money given to you by the fairies that turns into rubbish. So, yeah, so according to folklore, if you do wind up in the fairy realm, you don't want to accept any offers, you don't eat any food from them, you don't take any money because it's going to do you no good. In horticulture, a hybrid baby rambler rose is called a fairy rose. The common name for this plant, the Monotropa uniflora, is the Indian pipe, also known as fairy smoke. The bladder campion is called fairy potatoes, but it also has a devilish folk name like many of these things because they were demonized over time. So the bladder campion is also called the devil's rattle box. I'm using a dictionary that is a few centuries old for these definitions, and a lot of them have a name that has to do with the devil. Uh, instead of fairy's hair, you'll see devil's hair, devil's shoestring. One of the definitions in here for the devil is heathen gods or idols. And a devil god is a heathen god. As the Celtic lands were Christianized, they did not just stop believing in the fairies. I mean, when you think about it, a lot of these folk tales from Ireland and other places were written down in only like the last few centuries, which shows that their oral storytelling tradition never really died out. But over the centuries, the beliefs about the Fae did change because of Christianity. Celtic peoples adopted the belief that when God cast Lucifer out of heaven, the fallen angels that didn't make it down to hell landed on earth, and those were the fairies. Here's an old prayer, for example, from the Isle of Man. People would have a dual faith going on where they would pray to the Christian God to protect them from pagan creatures, right? So we can see by this prayer how people took on the belief that the fairies were fallen angels cast out of heaven for committing the original sin of pride. Purging flax has a lot of folk names such as fairy lint, fairy flax, or dwarf flax. The blazing star is the fairy wand. Wallflowers were known as fairy wallflowers. The fairy primrose could refer to the Chinese primrose or the European alpine primrose. A fairy tree is a large palm-like kelp of the Guinness Lasonia. And of course, there's other fairy trees within the lore that aren't mentioned here. I know the hawthorn is big in Celtic lore. So obviously, there's some things that were not mentioned in here. Let me know if you can think of any other fairy flowers. A fairy arrow or an elf arrow, an elf dart. These things refer to an affliction, a sickness that people believed was due to malevolent fairies. Another interesting fun fact for you guys who have perhaps heard of the wild hunt from Nordic lore, Slua referred to pre-Christian beliefs of otherworldly beings sort of running amok. And this Gaelic word is actually where we get the English word slogan. You have a slogan for something from Slua being this battle term or army, a great host. After I learned that, I never looked at the word slogan the same. Fairy's butter is a blue-green algae, and there is plenty of folklore about the wee folk stealing butter. There is a fairy's butter, and there's also a witch's butter. Considering that one of the definitions for fairy is an enchantress, it makes sense that a lot of these fairy folk names coincide with the witch folk names. Fossil sea urchins were called fairy loaves or fairy stones in England. But a fairy stone could also refer to a star-like crystal. Fairy shrimp can be found as far north as Great Britain, and there seemed to only be one species of fairy shrimp left. From what I'm seeing online, this is now a protected species. But the Chirocephalus diaphanthus is called a fairy shrimp because of its pastel colors and graceful movements. Overall, I'd say Foxglove takes the cake here as it has the most folk names. It's highly associated with the fairies, at least in this book. I mean, fairy thimbles, fairy fingers, fairy gloves, fairy petticoats, fairy... It's got a million folk names, but it is poisonous. 
So I would recommend that you wear gloves if you are going to be handling foxglove. Definitely research what plants you're putting in your garden. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to click that notification bell and subscription button so you don't miss more enchanting content. I'm wishing all of you a marvelous Halloween time.